So you're avoiding chemical filters by using a mineral sunscreen, but what if you're putting microplastics on your face instead? I realized that's exactly what I was doing after I started digging into the ingredients in my own mineral sunscreen. One of the first products that made me realize this was the Haru Haru Wonder Pure Mineral SPF Daily Relief Sunscreen. It's a very long name. And it is one of the most popular Korean sunscreens sold online. It's supposed to be gentle, fragrance-free, and made of really great ingredients. But when I looked closer, I noticed one particular ingredient, methyl methacrylate cross polymer. And that is what pulled me down the rabbit hole of microplastics in your mineral sunscreens. You can take the chemical methyl methacrylate by itself, and it's actually used to make acrylic, the type of plastic that plexiglass is made of. The liquid you just saw here is something called methyl methacrylate. It is used to manufacture acrylic glass. In skincare, the ingredient name looks a little bit different. Methyl methacrylate cross polymer. The cross polymer is added to the end. That small change means it's been modified from its original form into microscopic solid porous polymer spheres instead of a hard acrylic sheet. The spheres are designed to absorb oil and scatter light, which is what gives products that blurred or matte effect on the skin. These particles are incredibly small, around 5 to 10 microns across, roughly 10 times smaller than the strand of a human hair. So they're invisible and they sit on your skin and give products that smooth blurred finish that everyone loves. It's important to note that they're still part of the acrylic family of materials. And even though I personally see that as a plastic material I'm putting on my face, not everyone agrees. Some argue that once it's modified, it's no longer considered a plastic, but it really depends on how you choose to define it. Here's where things get confusing. In the European Union, the definition of microplastic includes any synthetic, solid, non-biodegradable polymer smaller than 5 millimeters. That means even tiny acrylic powders or cross polymers used for texture can fall under that definition. Though some companies describe these polymer microspheres as liquids or gel systems because they're suspended in a liquid base, which makes it sound like it doesn't fall under the microplastics label. But they're actually solid, porous microbeads, so it's strange that companies would claim that they're liquids. But in the United States, the only microplastics that were banned are the larger plastic beads that used to be in scrubs and rinse off cleansers. That means the smaller ones, the ones that stay on your face all day, those are allowed. So we banned the big microplastics that actually wash off, but we're fine with the smaller ones that stay on your skin. Depending on how it's labeled or formulated, the exact same ingredient can be described in completely different ways. And because definitions are still evolving, there's plenty of room for brands to argue that their version doesn't count as a micro plastic, but it's up to you to decide how you define it and what you're comfortable using on your skin. So I got a comment recently that said, why is everything trying to kill me? And that was in response to a short that I posted about formaldehyde being in memory foam products and how in the US we don't have any regulations over this. I'm bringing that up because it shouldn't be this difficult to buy everyday items like mineral sunscreens that aren't potentially damaging or harmful. Potentially. And in this video, it wasn't my intention to dive deep into the science behind potential microplastics and the different regulations and all of that because we could be talking about that for a very, very long time. I wanted to just give you one solid example of a microplastic in my experience to kind of open your eyes to what's going on. This is something that is a widely debated topic and I can see in the comments section, there could be people debating this. If you don't have time to dive into researching products and their ingredients, I did it for you. And I spent a lot of time searching and searching and testing and trying out different products. And I have some very specific standards because I'm kind of picky. I really wanted these things to be as affordable as possible because a lot of influencers recommend a lot of very pricey mineral sunscreens. And by the way, many of them contain these potential microplastics. So I have three criteria that it had to meet. It needed to be affordable at under $6 per ounce. The formula needed to be elegant smooth, not chalky, not causing a white cast, and not greasy. For the ingredients, I wanted them to be as clean as possible, avoiding things like parabens and potential microplastics. So these microplastics show up in most mineral sunscreens because it makes the formula apply better. It's more wearable. It applies more smoothly and looks better overall. But it is actually possible to make mineral sunscreens that look beautiful and work really well 
without microplastics. They have to just use better ingredients and better formulation skills. So after going through endless ingredient lists and searching through so many different products out there from Korean brands to American brands to luxury products, what I discovered is that almost all of them contained potential microplastics and the ones that didn't had pretty horrible formulas. They were thick, pasty, and not something that I would ever want to wear personally. What I also discovered is that I found two that have really, really great ingredients and a great formula. The first is Native's Unscented Mineral Sunscreen SPF 30 with a 20% zinc oxide. This is my top rated recommendation for the price, the amount you get, the application, and the formula. So I cannot recommend this enough. It costs between $15 to $20 for this five ounce tube, which is very large. So it comes to about three to $4 per ounce. So that is a really great value if you compare it to the price of other mineral sunscreens that are out there, some that are very popular. I think this is ideal for all skin types. It applies beautifully and it doesn't leave a white cast and it is not greasy on me at all. And I have normal to dry skin and this works really well for me. The second one is Mad Hippie's Mineral Body SPF, which is an SPF 40 with a zinc oxide of 20%, just like the last one. This is about $18 for four ounces or about $4.50 an ounce. And even though this is intended for your body, you can use it on your face. They do sell a face one that is a lot pricier per ounce than this one. And the formulas are so similar, which is why I would recommend getting this one instead and using it on your face because it works just as well. So this one applies a little bit differently than the native one. It's kind of hard to explain, but it almost makes my skin look creamy in a way. I know that sounds really weird. It doesn't make it look dewy or shiny, but it makes my skin look better than it normally looks. You can see how it evens out my skin tone, canceling out redness, and it has a really nice finish that's not dry or greasy at all. It really kind of improves the look of my skin. But with saying that, the formula is a little bit trickier and a little different than this one. And what I've noticed with this is that it's a bit tackier and it leaves a bit of almost like a stickiness on my hands after I apply it. When you're using mineral sunscreens and you're trying to use ones that don't contain potential microplastics, the formulas can be a little trickier to work with. And I just recommend taking a little bit and applying it to a small area of your face, rubbing it in, and then going to the next section and rubbing it in and repeating it if you wanna layer on more than that one layer. And that's how I do it. And I do that with this one as well, even though this formula is very smooth and easy to work with. But this one is a little bit trickier and I feel like this one would work well if you have oily to normal skin. But even with saying that, I think either of these would work for all skin types. I have tested out so many other clean mineral sunscreen products and the formulas were a lot worse than these ones, a lot worse. And what you're getting here is quite incredible for the price and for the clean ingredients that they have. So before you buy your next mineral sunscreen, I recommend taking that ingredient list into an AI program and asking to see if any of those ingredients are considered microplastics, at least by the EU's version, if that's important to you. And if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe for more videos. If you're new here, my name is Holly and I make videos about science-backed wellness and honest experiments. Thank you so much for watching and take care.